Boy, I've never seen a reaction like this. We have to, we have to prep the audience ahead of time, telling them, hey, listen, don't make too much noise. It's a live radio show. And even the dudes are like, ah, they <laughs> We didn't get this reception at 10 o'clock when we got in? No, that's for sure. That wasn't us? Thank you for joining us, David Beckham and Tim Laiwicki. Yes. David, um, yeah, you're going to have to use that microphone. Yeah, They're no. not going <laughs> to. It's radio. <laughs> David, first, why did you decide? I'm sure you've answered this question many times, but please, for us here today. Why did you decide to come and play for the LA Galaxy? Um, well, first off, good morning, uh, or almost good afternoon. Um, well, when I first met Tim, um, we kind of hit it off straight away. Uh, we had the same ideas, we had the same kind of dreams uh, and ambitions. What were they? To, to, to win and to, to be champions and um, to make this sport bigger in a country which it's not as big as it is everywhere else in the world. So the story was, you know, we, we became friends first and then we became business partners and then, um, you know, I had moved obviously the family here. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, playing in Europe, I'd played in Europe for over 15 years. Uh, played for Manchester United, uh, played for Real Madrid, won, you know, everything I could with, with both teams. Um, and. I came, you know, to to the decision of coming over to LA because I wanted to. I love a challenge. Uh, I've always loved the challenge throughout my career, um, and I believe that moving to LA, playing for the Galaxy, playing in the MLS, uh, and becoming a champion here, uh, as well as everywhere else that I've played, uh, was a big challenge. Um, was the challenge to popularize soccer in the United States? No, my first challenge was to be a champion with the Galaxy. Uh, and obviously on the way, be an ambassador for the MLS and be an ambassador for the sport and, and to, to raise the profile of soccer here in, in America. Um, and I think we've done that gradually in, in the last five years. Uh, I think, you know, the league is in a, a great position at the moment, uh, financially and, you know, interest-wise, because, you know, people talk about the MLS now in, in Europe, and that's a big thing. So, you know, I think we've continue to do that and we will continue to do that over the years uh, it's something that I've been excited about it's something that I have enjoyed since I've been here um, and it's been success so I'm enjoying it now talk about the decision to coming or coming to LA I mean LeBron James had to deal with a lot of backlash uh, because of his decision in, in basketball talk about your response from the fan base over there in England and then the reception from those in LA I think obviously I came from Real Madrid um, to to LA um, and to a league that wasn't as you know as high profile as the the leagues in Europe. So obviously there was a certain amount of I wouldn't uh, I don't want to say confusion, but you know a decision to to leave one of the biggest leagues in the world to come and join a league that was only 15 years old, um, but. People know that I'm, I'm an ambitious person. People know that I'm a person that loves a challenge and, and wants to um, improve myself you know, on the field and off the field. And, and that was one of the things that I was excited about moving to LA. A lot of people were surprised because you know, being at Real Madrid for four years, um, people expected me to stay there. But like I said, you know, I, I'm a person that wants a challenge, a person, a person with a lot of ambition. Um, and I, set, I saw this as an opportunity to, to be part of something special. Um, and it, for the first couple of years, it was tough because we wasn't producing on the field. Uh, and that, for me, is the biggest thing. You know, I've always said, people say, you know, how important is the money? How important is the, the things that come with, you know, the, the success you've had over the years? For me, you know, the money has never been <laughs> important to me. Yeah, I know people might turn around and say, well, it's easy for you to say that because you have this and you have that and you have a great life. But it never has been the number one priority for me. My, my number one priority in my career is to be successful and to be you know, a, a, a championship winner. Uh, and that will always be the same. Well, speaking of money being the number one priority, Tim, let me ask you something. <laughs> you guys have... I was, I was <laughs> listening to all of that. That, that was right. interesting. That's right. <laughs> um, AEG has done a tremendous job, uh, specifically in downtown Los Angeles, 
huge capital investment and excellent political maneuvering to make it all happen. It's very difficult to get things done in L.A. A lot of red tape, et cetera, you've been able to cut through. The Kings just win the Stanley Cup. The Lakers have had their success that they've had, of course. Now you guys are talking about uh, maybe bringing two NFL teams here. What did it mean to bring David Beckham to the United States, to MLS? What did it mean for you? Well, we, we had put so much time and money into the league, and we were – a lot of people still didn't believe in that vision. So as a company, they questioned the, the commitment that we had made, the vision that we had laid out, and almost everyone bet against us. And so when we were able to get David, it, it kind of changed the landscape forever. And it suddenly not only put our company in, in a position of people saying, oh, my God, when these guys put their mind to it, they really mean it. But if you think about what's happened to the league since then, we've had uh, a new team and a new stadium in Toronto, in Vancouver, in Montreal, in Seattle, in Portland, in Philadelphia. We have more coming. Now we have a half dozen different cities around the North America that are chasing us. We built new stadiums in existing markets like Salt Lake and Houston and New York. Uh, and so suddenly the whole league has changed our ratings. Now we're on NBC and NBC Sports as well as ESPN. You look at the amount of, of audience that's created for a game yesterday, like England and, and Italy for the, the, the Euros. And, and it's amazing how soccer is much more relevant in our country as a topic, much more relevant as a business conversation. For us, we like to win. You know, David's right. We, that's one of the things we hit off uh, on right off the bat is if you look at AG, we've won nine championships in the last 12 years. And so whether it be the Lakers, the Kings, or the Galaxy, and that's not even talking about our German hockey team that's won seven out of the last eight championships in the DEL League in Germany. So we, we're built on winning. That is part of our fiber. And one of the things we knew with David is we were going to be able to accomplish two things at once. From a competitive standpoint, we won the Supporters' Shield two years running. Don't count us out this year. Uh, like every team, we, you, you always have a bit of a hangover when you win the championship and try as hard as we had, and it took a lot out of us. Some of our guys went to Europe. It took a while to get everybody focused, but as we've seen in the past week, this team is capable of doing just about anything they put their mind to. Uh, if you look at the ability of our company now to take all of our assets and go have this conversation about bringing the NFL back to LA. And you look at our track record. So when we tell people we're going to do something, we've done it. And we've done it in a way that not many other organizations have had that kind of track record. It gives us an enormous amount of credibility with the NFL that if they move a team here and if we get Farmers Field built, for the next 20 years, they're not going to have to worry about whether or not we're going to be successful. So there was a lot more to David than just the Galaxy, but him and I agreed from day one, and we've repeated it, both of us, uh, until we won the championship, uh, then our job here wasn't done. And like him, once you win that first one, you want to win more. Mm -hmm. So we're very focused on trying to win a couple of more here before he becomes uh, our partner at, a, at an ownership level. Well, you can't brand yourself with winners or as a winner unless you win. Mm -hmm. So what position are the Galaxy in now as defending champions off to that slow start? Coming up, David Beckham talks about it. Max and Marcellus, lunch with a legend from Morton's The Steakhouse in downtown LA. Yeah, you can clap now. You can clap. You're Yankee. impressed David Beckham is here in the flesh. I know you're all impressed. <laughs> 710 ESPN. There it is. Yeah, we're at, down, at Morton's the Steakhouse in downtown LA. Don't bother coming down. This has been sold out Why for not? a long time oh, because David out. Beckham is here. Ah, love me I've only much. sat this close to a, this, someone this famous a couple times in my life. Yeah, I could tell because you hogged him. I told you before the show. No, I I'm going to sit next to David. I didn't say it in that no, tone. I'm gonna... I said, no, I want to sit next to David. There you go. There you go. Switch it up. See, the big man wins. Now now I have a better view anyway. From oh. over here, I can talk. Because he scares me. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Um, they're, they're not, none taken. Uh, he, he's, not, he's not scary at all. But he's like Stop. the softest guy in the history of Compton. Stop. Don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> now listen. Uh, David, we were talking about the, the competitiveness of the Galaxy right now as defending champs. Before we even get to that, what's the difference for you playing, over, playing in England, in Spain, and here, what are the differences? Um, well, the differences are not that different, to be honest. I think that at the end of the day, you know, like I said, when I first moved over here, this league was only 
uh, had only been around for 13, 14 years, um, whereas you know the leagues in 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 Europe have been around for 100 years. Um, so you know there's a slight difference with that, but I think you know the level of play definitely uh, has gone up in the last five years. You know the the fact that you know Thierry Henry, Rafa Marquez, these these kind of players, Robbie Keane, are coming into this league shows that there's you know, more of a competitive edge coming into uh, this game in, the, in, in this part of, uh, part of America and this part of the world. And uh, it tells you, by the way, something about your competitiveness because th that's the kind of answer we get if you ask Derek Jeter or Kobe Bryant yes. or a champion like that. They go immediately to the field of play. When, you know, but I mean in your life, walking around on the street if you can. I imagine over there, not possible. Is it more possible in L.A.? Is it the same thing? What are the differences in, in, in just living the life of David Beckham in L.A. versus in Spain or in England? I mean, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Modest. <laughs> but, but no, you know, I think the biggest thing for, for us as a family is, you know, the, the kids. You know, the, the kids is, is, is our number one priority and where they're happy. And for the last five years, they've been incredibly happy here. So... You know, they're able to go to school and be normal kids and be treated like normal kids. Whereas maybe in, in Europe, it's been different for us. You know, living in Spain for four years, the attention that we had there as a family and, and on our kids was, was a lot more intense. But of course, you know, we, we have attention here. But, um, you know, for the kids to be, to be brought up around this kind, of, uh, this kind of atmosphere and, you know, this way of living is, is the most important thing for us, and, and they're happy. Yeah, you talk about the kids leaving, living a normal life. Let's talk about you and your normal day. Uh, sports fan, what do you like to do to get away from the game? Literally spend time with my children. It's, that's, that's all I ever do. It's all I ever want to do. Um, and for me, you know, I'm a normal dad, you know, I take the kids to school in the morning, and I, I pick them up in the afternoon. Um, you have police I, escort or are you by yourself? <laughs> no? no, by myself, oh, of wow. course. And then um, cook dinner at night for them and put them in bed, read them a story. So you I, cook? Um, of course. What did you cook last night? What did I cook last yes. night? Papa I John's? cooked spaghetti bolognese. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Because when I was on loan in, in, uh, in, 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 in Italy, I took a, a culinary course for six oh, months. Oh, oh, oh. So, now you're uh, showing off. So. <laughs> now all the women listening are going, ah! Yeah. They just, any little shred they had left of, of self-respect is now gone. <laughs> just, oh, he cooks! He took a culinary course! Ah! In Italy. Uh, no, in Spain, sorry. Spain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So. Uh, okay, so field of play now. You guys win the championship. The only championship in L.A. it looked like until the Kings, until the Kings came through. Exactly. Slow start. You won three in a row, just beat the Whitecaps, 3 nothing. Made up nine Why points. was there a slow start? What have you guys gotten together recently? Um, you know, I think, you know, like Tim said, you know, any team that wins a championship, there's kind of a hangover. Um, and personally, I, uh, Tim said this to me the other day, and I said, actually, I've never had that, you know, with, with teams that I've played with in the past. And, you know, with us, we've, we kind of came back and... You know, we, we wasn't focused. It's as simple as that. Why? Um, you never had know. it in the past. You guys had your eyes on the prize. What yeah. was different on this team? Um, I don't know. Maybe we just got a little bit lazy. Maybe, you know, we ate too much in the off-season. <laughs> L.A. weather. Um, oh. L.A. weather, yeah. beach, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> a nice life, like I said a few minutes ago. Right. Um, but, no, you know, we wasn't focused as a team. Uh, it had nothing to do with the management. The management's great. The, the staff that we have down there is great. Um, it's like Wiki's fault. Yeah, it might be, but in partly, a roundabout partly. way. <laughs> How so? <laughs> well, uh, I, I think at the beginning of last year, we did sit down and have a conversation with the team about here's what we need to do this year. Let's all get on the same page. This is what we expect. We didn't have that conversation this year. Maybe we should have. Hmm. But the thing about this team is I knew eventually they'd figure it out. You know, you're talking about if you look at that locker room, I'll, I'll compare the leadership in our locker room with the Galaxy with any sports team, forget just in Southern California, this is one of the most, uh, from a character standpoint, one of the deepest group of players I've ever seen. Is that your experience, David, that this is in fact, you've, you've played all over the world, obviously, on great teams. Is it, how would you describe the locker room? We've got a great locker room. That's one thing that, you know, I'm very proud to be part of a team that as, as together as we are. Um, and that's why it was hard to, 
kind of accept the way that we were playing in the first half of the season. Um, and, you know, like I said before, it had nothing to do with the management, the staff, Tim, no one. It was literally the players wasn't performing on the field. In the last three games, we've performed and, you know, we're back up there. So, you know, things can turn around in this league very quickly. And I think we've done that in the last week with, with three big wins. Yeah, I mean, last year you won the championship with the Galaxy. And just recently we saw the Kings win the championship. We saw you there with the Stanley Cup. Just talk about that experience, celebrating championships with others. Um, it's amazing, you know. I was I was invited down to you know the the celebration with the Kings and with the guys and by Tim, um, and I'd been to the majority of the games this season. So to actually you know be there for the final game and and have my kids there because the kids have all of a sudden become huge Kings fans. So to be able to take them to the games was was incredible and uh, a memory that I'll never forget. But then to come out and spend a few hours with the guys and have a couple of drinks with, with the guys. There you go. Uh, which was, How do they which, drink? How do those Kings players drink? Oh, they can't drink. Nothing like soccer players. <laughs> 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 I'm totally lying. They can yeah, drink. Yeah, by the way, <laughs> that's not true, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I found that out that night. But I think um, they're still drinking right now. This is like <laughs> At a certain point, do you have to tap out or, or does, does some athletic I, I competition come I, in? I, I couldn't. There's no way. You know, I'm a... I, I'm a um, <laughs> Very determined person, so I had to stick it out. Oh, with them, but, oh uh, man. What do you weigh? It was tough. What do I weigh? Yeah. Um, 165. And some of these guys are like 230. Oh, they're huge. <laughs> they're huge. But, you know, I tried to stick with them. I tried to stick with them. But like I said, you know, it was a huge honor to be there with these guys because you watch them work, you know, in, in these games and the way they are together. And I said to the players, our players in our team before one of the games, I said, if we can put as much effort into our games as these guys put into their games every single second of the game, uh, we're going to be successful. Um, and we've done that in the last three games. But, you know, that night was an incredible honour for myself to, to be there with the guys, to, to see, you know, the happiness, to see, you know, because these are they're grown men. And, and when you see the excitement in their eyes, you see, you know, they're like little kids, you know, it's the same as when you see, you know, players, big players win championships, you know, the, you kind of revert, revert back to your childhood and the excitement of, of being a champion and, you know, holding the cup up was, uh, was incredible. And Tim turned around to me, I showed him the picture and he was like, how the hell did you get your hands on that cup? You're not meant to touch it. <laughs> but You were drinking out of it, that's what I was mad about. <laughs> No, Every time you turn around, there's a drinking story. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's going, going on? on, David? What's going on with that spaghetti? In yeah. <laughs> it was all, don't, it was Coke Zero. It was all right. There wasn't anything in there. Yeah, all I know is every girl in this place, every woman, excuse me, in this place right now, mm -hmm. Beckham's like, yeah, I drive the kids to school in the morning. I pick them up in the afternoon. I cook. <laughs> yeah, no, the money's not important, but I got a lot of it. You know, yeah, I got right. championships. <laughs> don't worry about it. Good life. Damn you, David Beckham, and all your success. The great David Beckham, a true legend, lunch with a legend. Are you the most famous? Like, okay, maybe Obama's the most famous guy in the world right now. Who's more famous <laughs> worldwide, you or Kobe Bryant? Uh, you can't ask me a question like that. How about you, Tim? <laughs> we should have asked him I'll the night when he had the cup I'll in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> because, by the way, Beckham, you, 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 David, you're trying to be, like, humble, but I see the competitive fire light in your eyes. Mm -hmm. and say, Me, Kobe? Come on, <laughs> soccer's worldwide. Which one, Tim? Who's the most famous oh, guy? I'm not touching that either because Kobe plays for us, too. Nah. But I will tell you one Everyone story. plays for you. You can't so talk about any of them. When we went to the White House, uh, the president had a private meeting with David and Landon, myself and the coach. You mean... David granted him an audience. David granted yes. him an audience. By, by the way, <laughs> yes. the president's kids know all about David because when sure. they came to the, it was the Lakers game six against Boston in the championship a few years ago, and they were all excited until they figured out that the Galaxy players were in there, and then all those kids asked me the rest of the night is, where's Beckham? I'm like, wow. he's sitting down on the court. But w w he's been phenomenal, whether it be meeting with the president in the White House, we had the, the soon-to-be president of China here. It was absolutely phenomenal because he came into the suite with his security guys. His security guys actually pull their guns out, unlike our Secret Service. <laughs> if someone gets close to the president of China, they just pull their guns out. And it's amazing how well that works. Everyone runs away. <laughs> <laughs> David Beckham comes walking in the suite, and the security guards Pointed all the president leave of China. the president, <laughs> pull their autograph pads out, and there's the president of China in the middle of complete chaos with not one security guy on him because <laughs> they're all in line getting pictures with David. So. I'd have to say, in all due respect to Kobe, uh, probably David, 
simply because of the worldwide appeal of football. And in particular, remember, he came here from the most popular team in the world, Real Madrid. Sure. So it was pretty amazing the commitment he made and then how patient he's been as we've grown our sport. You'd have to say that as we go around the world as popular as Kobe is, I'd have to say you're probably sitting next to the most popular sports figure in the world. You know what? When we come back, I want to know the craziest story that you have in reception of your celebrity, where you've been somewhere and even you were overwhelmed by the experience. Yes, David's not tired of talking about his own celebrity yet. <laughs> I'm just envious. He's champing at the bit to do this. I'm just envious. Max and Marcellus, <laughs> David Beckham, lunch with a legend, along with Tim Laiwiki of AEG 710 ESPN. Yes, we are having lunch with a legend. We are? David Beckham. Where's my steak? Not to mention Tim Laiwiki. Uh. I don't know, they keep saying Villaraigosa is the mayor of LA, but if he's the mayor, Tim, I think you're the governor. Uh-oh, sure. don't start that. I can't afford to be either. I don't <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, but we, before we went yes. to break, yes. I have to hear this story. Yes. I need to hear a response to this, because you know, I've been around a few star athletes in my time, and we got to keep this PG, because I've seen some of the reactions that you get at times, but what's been the craziest experience you ever had because of your celebrity? Um, I mean, I've been lucky throughout my career. I've had quite a few crazy experiences, you know, obviously arriving, uh, arriving in L.A. and uh, the reception that I got in L.A. was uh, pretty incredible and the reception that we got as a family because since we moved here, you know, I'll never forget the way uh, people in America, people in L.A. have treated us. It's uh, as a family, it's uh, it's been really incredible. But I think. The, the time I traveled to uh, Japan uh, on kind of a prom promotional um, week that where I was going there for a few different things. Uh, and me and my wife arrived at the airport and there was literally 10,000 people just to mm. see us arrive and walk through the terminal. So that was, that was probably the craziest. Wow. That sounds like Muhammad Ali's story. You know, there are some athletes that come around, Muhammad Ali, Pele, Jordan, mm -hmm. David Beckham, where you hear that, where they're just taking a routine trip somewhere, and at the airport, they didn't just win a championship, though they may have. Right. You know, and it's not why the people are there. They're just there to see you. What was the moment in your career where you thought, uh, this ain't normal? We saw the Dream Team documentary, and in Barcelona, it was finally like, whoa, this is all for us. Yeah. But this is wherever you go. What was the first time in your career you said, this is not a normal existence anymore? Um, I've never thought that, to be honest. You know, I've gone throughout my career and, you know, when, when I was a kid, um, you know, my dad used to turn around to me and say, I'll tell you when you've made it. <laughs> Has he told you yet? He told me when we won the Champions League for Manchester United, he said, today's a good day. <laughs> because my dad was a Manchester United fan, you know, from a very young age. And to see me, you know, lift the biggest club, you know, uh, competition, championship, um, with, a, with a team that he supported. For me, that was, that was, that was special. And when my dad turned around to me, he said, you know what, boy, you've, you've done well. And that, and that for me was, uh, was is the only moment that I've, you know, felt kind of that I've reached a level that he was proud of. So um, for me, so that was... Don't you feel like taking him and shaking him, saying, <coughs> done well now? What's the matter with you? You see what's going on around here? What about when I bought you that house? Was that good? <laughs> I mean, you know, speaking of that, I mean, that's in stark contrast to when you were growing up and you were telling your teachers in elementary school that you wanted to be a footballer and they kept telling you no. Do you play with a chip on your shoulder? Do you still remember those times where all the people said you wouldn't make it? I think you always have to remember those times um, because uh, I do remember that moment. I was sat in my classroom, you know, it was a long time ago now, but I was sat in my classroom and my teacher turned around to me and said, you know, what do you want to do, you know, when you, you know, when you leave school? Um, and I said, I want to be a professional football player, professional soccer player. And they was like, no, what do you want to do as a job? What do you really want to do? And I was like, no, that's exactly what I want to do. Wow. Um, so I remember those moments. And I also remember, you know, when I was, when I was um, in, you know, just starting to become um, a player for, for Manchester United, um, you know, I, I, I went for England trials for, for, to play for the country. Um, and I didn't make the grade. They told me that I was uh, too small and that I'd, there was one coach, particular coach, that I won't mention, uh, mm -hmm. said to me, you know, I'll never play for England. 
Why don't you mention them, David? Just yeah, yeah, you could do it no, now. Come on. This is, I don't this think you'll get cut. No. You no, won't I'll, get cut from the no, galaxy. This is the Michael Jordan story. See, it's a lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah sure. I'll, you know, I would never do that to, to that person. But, you know, in my mind, I always remember those words. You know, you'll never play for England. And fortunately, I went on to play 115 times and, and captained my country for over 50 times. So um, it worked out in the end. You mentioned, Tim, did you mention that Real Madrid was the most popular uh, soccer team in the world? Or was that? Or did well, they he's going to get mad at me, but I, but, I think but he'd agree. They're, they're, Manchester they're, United has won the most championships, no? They have, but the thing about Real Madrid is because of the Latino and Hispanic following, when they go to places uh, around the world, it's Man U is unbelievably popular in places like Asia. Real Madrid's popular everywhere, right. and, and they, are, they have a great legacy and a tradition and they tend to have some of the greatest players in the world that come from their system and play for their team. So, you know, I'd argue that if you look at Los Angeles and we had to say which of the two teams would draw the most amount of people, it would probably be Real Madrid. Now, I, this in, it's interesting hmm. to me, your profile, because I grew up in New York as a Yankees fan. I'm in L.A. I'm a Lakers fan. Those are the two iconic brands in those sports in this country. And when I think of soccer, I think of Manchester United. But apparently, Real Madrid is, and you've played for, Man, won championships with Manchester United, the Yankees or the Lakers, Real Madrid, the Yankees or the Lakers, and now in L.A. with the Galaxy, like the Yankees or the Lakers. What, why do you keep, is that, is that, was that your goal? I'm going to play for, for the number one franchise. No, my, my goal was to play for Manchester United from the start of my career to the end of my career. I, I had no intention of moving anywhere else. You know, I was a Manchester United fan from a young age. Uh, it was my dream to, to play for them. It was my dream to, you know, wear the number seven shirt um, and my dream never to leave them. Uh, but, you know, things happen in your career and things happen in life. And I moved on and fortunately I had another one of the biggest teams in the world come to me and say they want to sign me from Manchester United. And, um, and that was a dream. So I moved from Manchester United to Real Madrid and then... You know, after four years and winning a championship with Real Madrid, uh, Tim came along and said, you want to come to play for one of the, f the I mean, the biggest club in, in the MLS um, and live in LA? And I was like, great, let's do it. So I've always been kind of lucky that I've been wanted by the biggest franchises. Not a coincidence. Um, uh, he's still... A He's still got Manchester United in his heart, right? I mean, like, you can you see it. His dad. He's man you. That that's man you. Yes or no, David? Right? Like, that's your... Uh, no. uh, it's well, always, not now, uh, obviously, uh, the Galaxy, but it's... It'll always be my team. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Real Madrid. I'm a fan of the, the other teams that I've played for throughout my career. But, um, you know, when you're a true fan of a team, you know, you don't change. And Manchester United will always be my team. David Beckham. Ladies and gentlemen, we got one mm -hmm. more segment coming up. Last segment, Lunch with a Legend. David Beckham, Tim Laiwicki, Max Marcel, 710 ESPN. Oh, there's yeah. still so much to ask, yes. David Beckham. I know, we only have one segment left. Now, I feel like playing shrink because like, what was your relationship like yeah. with your father? No, right, right. Father finally tells him he done good after he wins uh, yeah. the championship with uh, Manchester United. We're, we're close to your dad? Yeah, very close. But, but but some tough love there, huh? With yeah, but I think that's why I was so successful throughout my career because my dad was always tough on me. You know, he uh, he kind of took me over the park and told me to practice things, and um, you know, he always told me that you know the best players in the world can play with both feet. Um, so he had me working on my left foot when you know I wanted to use my right foot all the time. So how old were yeah. you at this time? Uh, eight, nine. So you know, he uh, he worked me hard and. He told me when I, you know, when I played a good game, he told me in a roundabout way that I played well. Um, but when I had a when I had a bad game, he'd tell me. Um, and you know, I think it was a it was a good thing for me. Now, Obviously, well, it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what comes with tough love is brutal honesty. And right now, you're closer to the end of your career than you are at the beginning of the career. To say it nicely, uh, what's left? <laughs> I'm yeah, not his dad. Thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, I'm not going to be like your dad. I'm not going to just tear into you. But what's left for you on the field, and what's next for David Beckham? How much left in the tank? I still feel that there's a lot left. 
Um, you know, I'm 37 years old now and I still love waking up in the morning and look forward to going to training. I think, you know, when that changes, then I'll realise it's time for me to stop. But I still love being out there. I still love training. I still love playing the game. Um, and I still want to continue to be successful and to work hard and to, and to also help the young players that we have in the team become, you know, better players. And um, I believe that me being on the field, you know, helps them in, in a way where I you know, can give them, you know, my experience of uh, that I've that I've gained over the last 15, 20 years, and um, you know, 37 years old, I still feel like I've got a good few years left. So we'll see. All right. So that's what's next for David Beckham, Tim. What's next for LA Sports? Because no disrespect to you, David, but we need football here. We have football, but we want football here. What's next for LA? Well, we're, we're almost done with the entitlement. Hopefully, we'll be done by the end of the summer. Once we get that done, then it's just finding a team. But I'm, I'm actually pretty optimistic. I, we've had some good conversations with the NFL lately. Our success on the campus at LA Live is not lost on them. So they see, in particular, on May 20th, when we had 100,000 people there for Lakers, uh, for, for Kings, and for the bike race. Uh, or pardon me, it was Clippers. And, and we had that many people come through the campus in one day and handled it, and there was no traffic jam. All the things everyone said would happen did not happen, and it was perfect. And they were watching, and they saw how well that we can do in that particular district at getting people in and out. So I'm optimistic that we're going to get through the hurdles of all the approvals we need by uh, early September, and then we'll turn our attention to a team. The, the one, th I mean, if you saw what happened today, I'm not sure if you guys heard in San Francisco, the county pulled 30 million of uh, funds back today from the stadium, even though the 49ers are under construction. Mm. And that's the world and the environment we live in. Teams are not going to get funding for new stadiums from municipalities. We're going to find a team. And what, what hurts us now is we're not certain. In order for us to be able to look a team in the eye and make a deal and financially get the deal done and move them here, we got to remove 100% of the obstacles here. And I think we're very close to getting that done here in the next two months. Amazing job, especially nice. with the capital investment. Oh, yeah, clap that up. That AEG is willing to make that yeah. uh, other companies are not really willing to make. Mm -hmm. um, David, let's get back to the star of the show here just for a second, Marcel. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> you and Tim Lai, Wiki, waxing poetic. Talking about <laughs> football, that's Talking okay. About football. Yeah. David Beckham sitting right here. Oh, I didn't know this. Sorry. <laughs> He's going to own David. a piece of the team with us, so talk to him. He's going to be a part ah. NFL owner, huh? Apparently so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he got your hand in his pocket already. He's got a David, what about like when Real Madrid comes? Sometimes you're on loan in Europe, sometimes not, but they'll be here August 2nd at the Home Depot Center. You talk about the influx of talent into MLS and the young kids and wanting to kind of bring them along so this country is exposed to these great young stars. They know how to play the game the right way, et cetera. What does that feel like? When, what does it mean to you when the Galaxy play Real Madrid or hasn't been for a while but Manchester United or someone like that? I mean, that's, that's one thing that we've seen uh, in the last five years. You know, you have the likes of Manchester United, Real Madrid, Barcelona, you know, teams like that coming over here to spend their pre-season uh, playing against MLS teams. And that tells you something because you don't get Sir Alex Ferguson, you don't get Jose Mourinho, you know, bringing his teams over, bringing their teams over if it's not competitive. Uh, and I think that's what's happened in the last five years. You've seen those big teams and those big players coming over. And it's great for the fans, you know, for, for fans to see Wayne Rooney come over, Ronaldo come over. You know, these are, these are the best players in the world. You know, when, when Messi comes over and plays here, you know, people want to see him play. And, you know, you get the young kids that are playing this game in this country, you know, coming along to the games, watching these players play. And they're, the, like I said, they're the best players in the world. So. You know, to be able to uh, actually play against these teams is a, is a real honour. You know, I, I knew what it was like. I played against the Galaxy for Real Madrid, uh, and you look forward to these games. You look forward to playing in these in these you know different countries around the world. So, you know, it's a big thing. When will ML? I always think that well, in order for soccer to really take hold in this country and be on the level of the NFL or NBA or Major League Baseball, the M and MLS must stand for Major League. In the NFL, you know the best football players in the world, NFL, play here. NBA, we, we monopolize most of the best talent. Same thing in baseball. But soccer is the world's game, and so the talent spread out. 
is there a world in the not too distant future where you see that a lot of the best players in the world, if not most of them, play in this country, or is that just not the nature of soccer due to its history? No, without a doubt, it will happen eventually. You know, America's uh, a place of opportunity. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come here because I wanted to bring the game of soccer and bring it to a level where it can com can compete with your football or you know you know the baseball and, and basketball and I think that we we can definitely do that. Um, <laughs> bless you. We can. <laughs> man, oh, you're going too right, far too now. Much. Stop, man. Come I on. cook for the kids. Oh. I drive them to school. <laughs> I'm looking at you and Someone I'm like, don't sneezes, even look at me, bless man. you Turn in the away. middle of a radio interview. Oh, goodness. You're next level with this, huh? There's really, there's something, there's, something, there's something off about this guy. Oh, this I don't guy trust him. <laughs> He's setting up the, the president of China or something. They're leaving to get his autograph. Oh, Mark. Uh, all right, enough with this. Uh, Stop it, David. I'm going to tear off his skin. There's going to be a cyborg underneath. <laughs> I don't even all right, sorry, you were saying. Yeah. I can't even remember that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I do have a quick question. He has a little computer readout. If you see through his eyes, it's like, say, bless you, the person just needs. He's not yeah. even, yeah. Yes. Well, you talked about the M in MLS, and it has to be major. Um, just on a global scale, because I have this argument all the time with the few soccer fans and friends that I have in common. I'm trying to get them into soccer. Go ahead. <laughs> you believe that one. <laughs> Ronaldo or Messi, talk about their games and who's the best player in the world outside of David Beckham. Um, well, I think it's very difficult because they're two of the best players in the world. You know, the best players in soccer at the moment, without a doubt. Um, Messi, you know, every single moment that he gets the ball, it's exciting. You know, the ball kind of looks as if it's stuck to his foot. You know, he's that kind of player that excites so many kids and so many people around the world. You know, it's, it's an, he's an amazing player to watch and, and play against. And Ronaldo does the same thing. You know, I was watching the Euros a few, you know, last week and they was talking about Ronaldo, you know, being disappointing in his first two games. And I was sat there and I was, you know, listening to the people that were commenting on him and I was amazed and it was making me smile because I'm thinking, you know, this is Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the biggest and the best stars in the game at the moment. And people are criticizing for the way he's playing. And then the third game came along, he scores the goal, puts them through to the next round. Next game comes along, scores a goal, and everyone's now talking about him being one of the best players of the tournament. So, yeah. you know, to, to criticize players like that at that point is ridiculous, but it happens. But, you know, I, c I couldn't choose who's best between them two because they're two of the best players in the world at the moment. Well, right. Let that be a lesson to you, Marcel. Stop criticizing David Beckham. Oh, stop Every it. time the Galaxy have a bad game, two segments of criticism of Beckham, <laughs> I have to sit here defending him. It's outrageous. You're lucky he showed up today. Oh, you can tell me the answer, David, after the show. Just uh, make sure uh, you give me your number uh, and I'll, 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 I'll give you a call, right? He tries to kiss up Dang. to you, Kobe. It's disgusting. He will try to worm his way into your life through a charity you have, through anything. If you give it him works. an opening. It works. David Beckham, thank you very much for showing up today and sitting down yes. with us. Pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure Pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim, Thank you guys. for making it all happen as yes. always. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Pleasure. Max and Marcel, 710 ESPN. <laughs>